Greetings, everyone. This video discusses different types of image sharpening. We cover sharpening for technical correction, creative use, and for print. For the demonstration, we're using our advanced photo editing and organizing application, Exposure. You can download the fully functional trial from our website if you don't own it already. The first common need for sharpening is technical correction, which is when images out of the camera appear soft. Use the controls on the sharpening panel to correct this. It is best performed at the beginning of your editing workflow. For accuracy, it's helpful to zoom in to an unscaled 100% or 1 to 1 image view. When applying sharpening, pay attention to detail areas and hard edges. Pan to an appropriate place in the photo using the navigator. For portraits, it's usually the eyes. Start with the amount slider. Temporarily maximizing this value makes the results of the other sliders more noticeable. After you're done, you can come back and readjust. Hold the Alt or Option key down while adjusting these sliders to toggle a real-time visualization of the adjustment. Radius controls the width of the sharpening area around each edge. Use Radius to target the hard edges of your photo. Detail controls how much of the fine textures, like pores, wrinkles, or fine body hair on the skin, are boosted, as well as grain at high levels. The masking slider controls how much contrast there needs to be between colors for them to be sharpened. A higher amount means only higher contrast areas will be sharpened. Be careful of sharpening low contrast areas like smooth skin. Too much sharpening can make them look rough and speckly. After making adjustments, you can compare the edits with the original image with the backslash key. Creative sharpening is performed for aesthetic reasons using the controls on the focus panel. Landscape photos can usually handle stronger or punchier adjustments for clarity, sharpness, and saturation. On the other hand, portraits usually look best with more subtle effects. It is helpful to use Exposure's brush to apply sharpening to a specific part of the image. In a landscape, you can use sharpening on main horizon lines to accentuate the separation between the middle and background. A mount adjusts the intensity of the effect or how much contrast is added to the edges in the photo. Radius controls the size or how wide the sharpening edges become. Threshold is similar to the masking control in the detail panel. It controls the minimum brightness change or amount of contrast an edge needs in order to be sharpened. Higher values exclude more areas. There are several presets available from the drop-down. Their effects range from subtle to aggressive. A larger radius is one of the ways to achieve the punchy effect mentioned earlier. Apply the effect to just the horizon by brushing. When the mask thumbnail is white, the effect is applied to the entire photo. Invert mask will turn off the effect everywhere. Then you can use the brush to apply the sharpening locally. To preview the effect on the image, hold the backslash key. Then use the layer opacity slider to reduce the strength of the effect. Ink diffusion occurs as various papers absorb ink during the print process. This can make prints lose some sharpness. The output sharpening options in the print dialog compensate for ink spread, so prints from exposure always look razor sharp. Output sharpening is integrated into Exposure's print process. However, if images also need enlargement before printing, check out our resizing application Blowup, which performs both resizing and sharpening in a single step. When sharpening for ink diffusion, start with a low sharpening amount because it provides a noticeable but not dramatic sharpening, which is effective for most prints. A small sharpening amount will affect only fine details like hair, and a wide radius will sharpen larger details if your print will be viewed at a distance. Use the media type list to select the appropriate radius for your paper type. 
And that concludes this lesson on sharpening and exposure. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Exposure, visit our website for more tutorials and additional information about the software. To receive the latest updates about our video content, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We'll see you next time.